I'm Ken Sanders. This is the Ammo Can Library. Real ammo cans from War Surplus decades ago that I've been filling full of books, poetry, short stories, novels from authors met along the trail, some in person, some dead authors from books, some living ones in here too. More and more dead ones every day. We're just going to fish through these ammo cans as we float down the river of my mind and uh, see what we find. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of books. Of, the ammo can is pretty small, but holds a lot of books. And uh, like I said, I normally keep a little better condition on my collection, but these, these books are specifically for for the river and some of these guys have lived in this ammo can for some decades now. Uh, bound to get a little wet here and there, you know, on the river after all. Oh man, there's so many good ones. How do we choose? Well, <clears throat> you can't go wrong with poet laureates for the most part. Well, maybe on a national level, I've been, I guess there'd been a few stinkers. We've been pretty lucky with the four or five Utah poet laureates. Uh, Ken Brewer, wonderful teacher, poet, mentor to so many. He taught so many young people how to write, but more importantly, taught them how to write well. Some years back, maybe 10 now, he uh, died a nine-month death of, from pancreatic cancer. It was pretty tough way to go. But Ken, in his dying, he taught his family, his friends, all of us that knew him, fellow poets. He taught us not only how to die, but how to live while you were dying. Uh, fond memories of him reading many times over the year at the store. There was never, never a bad Ken Brewer poem. Um, the uh, Local poetry, wonderful people at City Arts published this old uh, book of his poems called Some of Accidents. It has one of my my favorite um, Ken Brewer poems I'd like to, to read to you. <clears throat> Why dogs stopped flying. Before humans, dogs flew everywhere. Their wings of silky fur wrapped hollow bones. Their tails wagged like rudders through wind. Their stomachs bare to the sullen earth. Out of sorrow for the first humans, stumbling, crawling, helpless, and cold, dogs folded their great wings into paws, soft enough to walk beside us forever. They still weep for us, pity our small noses, our unfortunate eyes, our dull teeth. They lick our faces clean, keep us warm at night. Sometimes they remember flying and bite our ugly hands. Ken Brewer, why dogs stop flying? Wrote a bunch of books, taught a lot of students over the years. Um, when Ken was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer, he started <clears throat> writing poems almost every day. And uh, he and I quickly decided, um, both knowing, this is called Whale Song, A Poet's Journey Into Cancer, um, partially the way through this, and the poems are all written chronologically. Um, I approached Ken about, Ken, we have to capture these and publish these poems. And we did so, though Ken agreed to this, knowing he would not live to ever see this book published. Uh, let, from the forward, let me let the late Ken Brewer tell you about this book and his illness. On June 10th, 2005, I was given the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, I can't pronounce those words, of the head of the pancreas with spread to other areas, including the main vessels to the liver, and the word non-operable. 
For a cancer marker test in which zero to 37 is the normal healthy range, my marker measured 14,668. When I received such bad news, I altered my life, including my writing priorities. More drafts each day, fewer revisions. Revision lost its appeal to me. So these are what I call raw poems. Some of them, I think, will hold up as polished poems, but only because I brought 40 years of writing practice to them in a flash of spontaneity. Call it frequent or infrequent luck. I think of this book as my chronicle of living with the certainty of death, but dealing with that in one way, through the writing of poetry. The poems changed in intensity, quality, and theme as I changed from day to day. This, after all, might be the greater value of the book to readers, the journey into cancer. Writing began to heal my spirit, but I had more than writing to help me. I had the nurturing and love of my wife, Bobby, my family, and all my friends. I keep hearing that poetry is dead in this country, but I refuse to believe that. When we must confront immediate crises, we seldom write novels or short stories. We write poems, or we sing, or we pray. Upon being told that my life was about to end, I wrote the first poem as if it were a boat of words launched towards places I have ever been. And we'll just sample a few of the, the whale song poems. Uh, they're all uh, written in chronological order as Ken became sicker and sicker. He used to compose them and type them and email them to, uh, to all of us. And later as he got sick, he would dictate them to, to, to one of his former students and good friends, uh, Star. Um, questions from my oncologist. What's the rhythm of death? Lambic pentameter or alexandrines with very, very longish syllables? Or the word death with its TH pressed against the roof of a coffin? Or fire that burns to ash and flutters from a plane, a cliff, a ship, a waterfall? What does a dead poet write if not free verse? What about the fear of abstractions? Closed or open form? Tradition? Cutting edge? Well, too late for that, perhaps. What about audience, publishing, S-A-S-E? What about handwritten manuscripts? And starting with and ending with a question. The visit. Death sits on the side of my bed. Skirt hike to hairline says, Hi, handsome. Dance with me. No thanks, I say. Not yet. I'm just a man with pancreatic cancer, not a corpse. Besides, I'm married. Death stands and straightens his skirt. I'll be back, marriage or not. Then he stumbles on his high-heeled shoes. Careful, I say, you'll kill yourself trying to walk like that. But the room, empty, squinches up like cheap perfume. Left alone... I admit I could become Mr. Bones and do that old soft shoe, shuffle, tap, shuffle. My father did that at the end, bones in my arms, as I carried him to the car for Indianapolis and the big VA hospital, where he saw death getting out of a cab. Nice legs, babe. You want to dance? And did. For Bobby, his wife, ours is the love of old horses in a field, head to tail, gently sweeping flies off each other's faces, our eyes half closed to the sun. We stand by a gate for the hay to come or another cool rain. Ours is love beyond time, 
while tall grasses grow and grow. Pissing on the ground. I sent a note to Ed McClanahan in Kentucky asking him to go outside one night soon and piss on the ground in my name since I don't believe I'll see Kentucky again. I don't intend anything derogatory in this. To me, it's like a dog marking territory, saying this is who I am and where I live. Tonight in our Providence, Utah backyard, while the waning full moon shines on the mountains, I plan to go outside and piss under the plum tree. I'm going to attempt to uh, get through the title poem, and then I'll need to stop. <clears throat> Whale Song. With all this flurry of surgery, all these MRIs and wires down my throat, I begin to realize my anatomy does not match most humans. My stomach is shaped like a J, a fishhook without barbs. My spleen, rhymes with baleen, floats out of space, unusually large and irregular. My veins run silent and deep and not where surgeons expect them. Witness the bruises below both collarbones. Lately, my stomach, my bile duct, my liver, my pancreas are annoyed. I hear gurgling, growling, roaring that suddenly I recognize as whale song. I compare my inner rumblings to an old tape I have. Whale song, no question. I am a whale. I love whales, love their songs, vibrating through their orchestral bodies out far into the ocean. In, in all directions. So I sing to all of you, to all the whales, to all the many beings. Love, 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 deep and resonant forever. Ken Brewer, the whale song. No, nope, I'm Ken Sanders, and I've come to the conclusion of another episode of Ammo Can Poetry and Stories from the river, from the mountains and the trails, and especially from the mind of yours truly, and with some help from my friends Emily Dickinson, Amy Irvine, and Leslie Marmon Silco, and Cactus Ed Abbey himself, Edward Estlin poetry, and this one has got the obligatory wine stains on the spine. Alex Caldero, don't you dare call him a poet. He is a sonographer. Craig Childs in his youth.